हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम बैक टू अनदर सेशन ऑफ डेली करंट अफेयर्स बाय एसएसबी क्रैक एग्जाम्स आई एम चेतन अपूर एंड आई विल बी टेकिंग यू टुडे सेशन फॉर ट्वेंटी ऑफ मे सो वी शेल स्टार्ट एंड लेट्स टॉक अबाउट एसएसबी क्रैक एग्जाम सो दिस इज अ वन स्टॉप सोल्यूशन फॉर ऑल द मेजर डिफेंस रिलेटेड एग्जामिनेशन लाइक एफ कैट एनडीए सीडीएस एटसेट्रा फॉर मोर डिटेल्स रिगार्डिंग द कोर्स इज दैट वी ऑफर यू कैन विजिट टू अर वेबसाइट लर्न डॉट एस एस बी क्रैक एग्जाम्स डॉट कॉम यू कैन ऑल्सो सब्सक्राइब टू अर यूट्यूब चैनल एस एस बी क्रैक एग्जाम्स वेर यू कैन गेट रेगुलर करेंट ऑफ योर वीडियो अपडेट्स एंड अदर डिफेंस रिलेटेड वीडियोज यू कैन ऑल्सो फॉलो अस ऑन इंस्टाग्राम एंड डोंट फर्गेट टू डाउनलोड आर एंड्रॉइड ऐप फ्रॉम गूगल प्ले स्टोर विच इज एस एस बी क्रैक एग्जाम्स राइट वी शेल स्टार्ट आवर सेशन विथ द क्वेश्चन ऑफ द डे फ्रॉम यस्टरडे सेशन सो आई आस्ट यू गाइज अबाउट वट इज बी एस एमिशन नॉर्म्स and uh, the answer to this was asked to be in the comment section yesterday now guys let's start uh, and let me tell you the answer for this so bharat sage uh, emission standards are emission standards basically and see it is a, it is named as bharat sage emission standards remember this name and th these are basically emission standards which was instituted by the government of india to regulate the output of air pollutants from compression ignition engines that is ci engines and si engines that is spark ignition engines or basically in uh, very layman terms if i tell you diesel engines and petrol engines right uh, and the equipments related to that including all the motor vehicles right the standards and the timeline for implementation are set by the central pollution Con control board that is cpp sorry cpcb which works under the ministry of environment forest and climate change further the standards based on european regulations were first introduced see bharat stage emission standards these are based on european emission norms which is also known as eu right now uh, were first introduced in 2000 in the year 2000 all new vehicles manufactured after the implementation of the norms must be compliant with the regulations and recently we all know that the government has focus and uh, uh said to the manufacturers to start produ producing bs6 engines right so currently we are in bharat stage 6 okay now let's move ahead guys and talk about our first news so uh, vice president uh, has asked the jal shakti ministry and niti aayog to study the feasibility of drinking water project and particularly in uh, the udaygiri area of nellore district in andhra pradesh right so let me tell you the details of this particular discussion so the vice president of india who is currently shri m venkaiya naidu ji today held a meeting with ceo of niti aayog and secretary of drinking water and sanitation and secretary of water resource river development and ganga rejuvenation and they discussed among themselves about various possible ways in which drinking water and irrigation needs of the drought prone udaygiri area nellore district andhra pradesh can be met now why specifically udaygiri area because it has been suffering from drought prone uh, conditions as well as one more reason is that uh, shri m venkaiya naidu ji himself uh, won and uh, won the his first election in 1978 from the constituency of uh, udaygiri area so that is also uh, one of the reasons why this area is close to him and hence he, he inquired about it while inquiring about the general well being they informed the vice president the others the delegates informed the vice president that the ground water levels in the area have depleted considerably because of the low rain right and tanks and borewells have dried up and various water supply schemes are not serving the water needs to the fullest that it uh, ideally it should have been right further they also informed the vice president that this is the seventh consecutive year where there there are no adequate rains so this particular area is suffering from um, you, you can say shortage of rainfall which is in turn leading to uh, depletion of you can say the groundwater levels or drying up of bore wells etc right further most of them requested shri uh, naidu to find out ways of getting water from the nearby krishna river basin and somasila project which is in figure shown over here right the vice president apart from all this meeting also spoke to the chief minister of andhra pradesh and shared with him the feedback that he had received from many of his acquaintances in udaygiri about the acute drinking water situation in that particular area and in return uh, the chief minister has of course assured 
for taking necessary steps and measures to fill up or to fulfill the required situation or uh, solve the problems of that particular area particularly about the drinking water the shortage of drinking water right now further let's move ahead to our next news the prices of n95 masks to be reduced after an advisory issued by NPPA. Now we all know that government of uh, government has notified N95 mass as an essential commodity under Essential Commodities Act 1955 by the government after the notification of uh, uh, including those mass as uh, in uh, in essential commodity back in 13th of March 2020. Right. So it was added already as essential commodity. It was declared as an essential commodity, uh, be it uh, sanitizers, alcohol, alcohol based, uh, you, you know, um, sanitizers and uh, the mass as essential commodity on 13th March then. Right. So what happens if any particular uh, commodity is uh, lies under essential commodities act then uh, the holding of that particular uh, object or article the holding the black marketing of those essential commodity will become a punishable offense under that particular act right to keep check on holding black marketing of the essential commodity NPPA now what is this NPPA this is national pharmaceutical pricing authority in exercise of the powers which was conferred under again another act national disaster management act in 2005 had directed all the states and union territory governments to ensure sufficient availability of surgical and protective masks hand sanitizers and gloves at prices not exceeding the maximum retail prices printed on the pack size with orders which was dated back on 13th of march 2020 right further uh, grievances have also been received by uh, NPPA regarding the holding black mar marketing and differential higher pricing of N95 masks in the country still even after it was included uh, as or declared as essential commodity. In this context, NPPA has now directed all the state drug controllers and food and drug administrations of all state UT governments to take appropriate actions regarding that. Now, the government is striving to ensure uninterrupted supply of N95 masks in adequate quantity in the country because we all know how important uh, the, these masks are in this important situation across a uh, nationwide uh, pandemic due to coronavirus. In this regard, in order to ensure availability of N95 masks now at affordable prices, NPPA has now issued an advisory latest on 21st May 2020 to all the manufacturers be it the importers or the suppliers of n95 masks just to ensure that they will have to maintain pa uh, parity in prices for even non-governmental procurements and to make available the uh, masks at reasonable prices as well now let us talk uh, let me tell you uh, in very brief about what are the constituent materials or the basic supply chain of n95 mass manufacturing process so, if you talk about the supply chain for N95 masks, basically uh, it mainly needs three different chemicals as a raw material uh, which is toluene, xylene and propylene. Now, this toluene, xylene and propylene, these three chemicals are, uh, these come from, these are byproducts and sometimes uh, uh, the uh, intermediate products of oil refinery industries and petrochemical facilities where uh, you know you can also say plastic industries as well where you will get these chemicals toluene xylene and propylene now these uh, three different chemicals they have separate usage in the manufacturing of n95 masks and these are further used as then see polyethylene is used for nose piece then uh, xylene is used for polyester mask shit and then further propylene is used for uh, making the filters through which the, uh, the you can say the airborne particles won't enter through the mask right and further then uh, uh, by using these three chemicals n95 mask in all is prepared right so this is the manufacturing or you can say the supply chain for n95 mask Further, the next news is about wheat procurement by government agencies that has surpassed the last year figures uh, figures and that too after we all know that uh, our nation has been uh, in a lockdown from a very long time from uh, longer than a couple of months even then the procurement has been at all time high and in fact it has sur surpassed the last year figures and basically last year it was 341.31 lakh metric tons 
and this year it has crossed it by 25,000 metric tons and it is 341.56 uh, lakh metric tons on 24 5 2020 and still a lot of proc uh, procurement is going on still right because in states like Haryana the procurement process has been started uh, slightly late right so the biggest challenge was basically to ensure that that procurement is done in a safe manner during the pandemic during uh, the coronavirus lockdown due to which uh, the entire nation was you know uh, it was uh, mainly transportation activities and all other activities were abandoned but still uh, by maintaining by keeping in mind that social distancing norms must be followed and all those uh, safety measures must be followed what actually was done by the government to ensure uh, uh, timely procurement i'll share some of the steps that uh, government took so the number of purchase centers was increased substantially reducing the pharma footfalls so number of procurement centers or pro purchase centers were increased uh, this uh, you can say this reduced the farmer footfalls or avoided overcrowding New centers were also set up using very, every facility available at Gram Panchayat level and the numbers were increased sharply in the major producing states which are Punjab uh, where it went from 1836 centers to uh, almost double 3681 centers then 599 centers in Haryana to triple almost 1800 in Haryana and from 3545 uh, in Madhya Pradesh to almost uh, 1.5 times to 4494 centers in Madhya Pradesh right so this has been increased another change was farmers were provided specific dates and slots to bring their produ uh, produce which helped in avoiding overcrowding right strict social distancing norms were followed rigorously and sanitization activities were also undertaken regularly in our next news REC limited which is uh, uh, one of the PSUs under ministry of power has tied uh, up has ties up with Taj Sats to provide nutritious meals to healthcare workers. Now, Taj Sats is one of those firms which is also responsible for air catering. So, REC Foundation, which is the CSR or social, uh, you can say, corporate social responsibilities arm of REC Limited, has participated, has partnered with Taj Sats. And uh, this Taj Sats is a joint venture of IHCL and SATS Limited to distribute specially made nutritious meal packets for medical staff and particularly for Safdarjung Hospital in New Delhi. Now, every day 300 food packets are being delivered as gesture of gratitude to frontline healthcare warriors of New Delhi. Now, let's talk about in brief about REC. So, REC is nothing but Rural Electrification Corporation Limited and it is one of the Noratna and NBFC focusing on power sector financing and development across India. It was established back in 1969 and it is also the nodal agency for government of India flagship schemes like in the power sector like uh, Deen Dayal Upadhyay, Gram Jyoti Yojana and Saubhagya Yojana. Right. So this was uh, it from today's articles. Now we shall end our today's article with the current COVID-19 update in India. So as of now, total number of active cases has uh, reached 80,722. But the cured number of patients has also crossed the 60,000 mark, which is a very good news. And uh, the recovery rate is uh, again uh, more than 41%, which is again a very good sign for uh, uh, all uh, for the entire country. Unfortunately, the num unfortunately the number of deaths has increased to 4167. Right. So this is the current situation as of 26th of May, 8 a.m. in the morning. Now it's quiz time guys talking about the first question in which of the following years was essential commodities act came into existence your options are 57 1957 56 65 and 55 so the correct answer is yes 1955 we have discussed this in today's article the next question is when did national disaster management came into existence basically national disaster management act and it came into existence in the year 2005 now further uh, let's uh, start our question of the day so the question of the day is what is NPPA of India we have discussed this national pharmaceutical pricing authority basic details write your answer in the comment section the correct answer will be told in the next session thank you and have a nice day Jai Hind